I've got an idea. I think that what we should do is instead of just being just an eight bar intro here, I'd actually like to set up a second hot cue and put it right below on five, which is halfway through the intro. All right, come on over here to my software. And what we're going to do is halfway through the intro, like I'm going to, I want to set a, uh, another option for getting in. So like I've got multiple ways of getting out, but I technically right now only have this one way of getting in, which is eight bars. So I actually want to set this to be halfway through the intro. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, four, two, three, four, one. Okay, so this green one on five now is my halfway through um, the intro. And this is a four bar intro now. So this is great if I had a song that was only a four bar chorus, I would start it from here. Or there might be a situation in which I, act, I like space out and miss the mix point. For instance, like if I were mixing this here, it's like, oh, and one. Oh, I missed it. Instead of waiting, what I can do is I can now queue up to five and be able to bring it in halfway through here and Right, so what I did is I then created another hot cue here, and I can get up to eight now. I can get up to eight hot cues, and this is a great thing to be able to have. You just have to remember what hot cue is which, right? So develop a system for yourself. And for me, when I'm using Juiced, this is sort of my system. So one, one is the beginning of my intro, two, three, and four are gonna be my uh, primary ways to get out, and then five is my halfway through my intro. So if my intro is 16 bars, then this would be from the one, and then this would be from the nine. So I basically do a halfway through the intro point. Um, this is kind of the system that I have, and then six, seven, eight, I usually kind of either leave open, or maybe I'll start to use them for other ideas, like maybe I would set a, a hot cue on eight for when the acapella out is, or something like that, or maybe a bridge here. Um, so you can use your hot cues however you wish. So I just encourage you to create some sort of a system and remember what you're doing because if there's not a system, it can get super chaotic. And instead of having to keep looking at your laptop to try to figure out what that hot cue means, having a system is a lot easier and working off of the pads here on the controller makes, makes things so much easier versus staring at the screen. All right, let's talk a little bit more about adding music to your juiced library and I actually want to talk about almost creating some separation between music that you like to listen to and music that you would DJ with so those are two different types of music would you agree I mean there's definitely a blend in the middle but there's certain music that you've maybe collected over the years maybe albums you've downloaded on iTunes or whatnot or just music that you've accumulated over the years as mp3s that you just would never really DJ with um, think about an album, for instance. Uh, you're probably not going to play that skit or you know something that's more of an album cut and not like a popular single. So um, I want you to try to separate those. And actually, that's what I have in my own library. Um, I don't bring my iTunes into this. You do have the ability to do that inside of Juiced, but I recommend just sort of keeping them a bit separate. So obviously, any MP3s that you own can come into Juiced. Um, but in addition to that, Juiced has the ability for you to stream music as well. And that's kind of the, the norm now, right? Where most people are streaming music. That's their library. Um, now, we want to be able to try to separate this out a little bit. But if we come on over to our library section, not only do we have this playlist here, but we also have um, Finder, Sampler. I'm going to skip over those right now. iTunes, which I just talked about. Beatport and um, Cobuzz. So for those of you who have a Koba subscription already, you can log in here. It'll just ask you for your email and password. You'll log in. Um, you can also create a free trial if you want. Um, and then also Beatport. So I've already logged into my Beatport. And in fact, actually, if I go to the back end so you can see what it was, you'll see my details. Connect. I've connected Beatport Link already. So Beatport Link is connected here. Um, and that's the service that we're using. So Beatport Link, 
gives you the ability to stream tracks within Beatport. Um, you also uh, can start to set up your playlists inside of Beatport and save them in your Beatport locker, which is right here. And depending on what the subscription is that you have, there's different levels of subscription for um, Beatport Link, and you'll choose whichever one you want to use. And depending on that, you can actually save tracks offline, uh, which means you don't have to be connected to the Wi-Fi in order to access those songs. There is a limit to the amount of songs that you can have, um, but if you're just streaming, you can do that just connected to the Wi-Fi. Now, um, why would that be a disadvantage sometimes? Well, if you're going out and DJing uh, outside of your home or outside of a place where there's a super stable Wi-Fi connection, uh, you just never know, right? And if you were at a venue and trying to use the Wi-Fi and all of a sudden the Wi-Fi dropped out or got spotty, then you would lose those songs um, and the music would stop in the middle of the party, which you wouldn't want. So if we come over to Beatport though, you'll be able to see that like all of the curated playlists come in. Um, I am connected to the internet right now, so I should be able to see all of this. Um, takes a little bit of a minute, but you can see, yeah, here it is. So this is the... Best new Afro house, um, and this is all. The, these are all the tracks right here. You'll notice that the BPM comes in as well as the key, and I can start to play these songs. So if I load them onto the deck, um, here it goes. It's just going to take a moment. You see, it's reading, it's analyzing, and you see that that's happening here. That's also happening on this bar. So it takes a moment to do this if this is the first time that you've played the song. <clears throat> And then once it does it, it's in. You've got 123 beats per minute, still the same BPM. It also filled out the energy field for me, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. And the track is here. So I can also, though, go in and set hot cues in the same way if I wanted to here. So um, I actually need to change this mode. I was looking at editing the beat grid earlier um, in between takes. And let's move to track player instead. I can set a hot cue. Right? And we can start to set cues. We could do all the same things that we would normally do with an MP3, but now we're doing them with songs that are streamed. Now, when I log out of Juiced and log back in, if I were to pull that song back up, all my hot cues would still be there, which is a really awesome feature. So um, at this point in time, what I would like you to do is to start gathering up some music. Maybe you're bringing in songs that you have MP3s of. Maybe you're downloading some songs from iTunes. Maybe you've signed up for a trial with Cobuzz or signed up with Beatport Link. I want you to start to put together four songs, about four songs that are within the same BPM range for the most part that you can start to mix together. And I want you to give your best shot at mapping these songs out and trying to set the hot cues in a similar way that we just did inside of these two demo tracks. So uh, that is some homework for you, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Great job today.